So Aisha radiallahu anha, the wife of Muhammad sallallahu was accused of adultery, of having an affair with Safwan ibn al-Mu'attal radiallahu anha. She was accused by who? The hypocrites. The man known as Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul. And the Prophet sallallahu initially, he kept quiet because obviously for him to clear the wife's name, people would say, oh, that's just because it's his wife. And he let it, he let it, you know, he let time pass by the instruction of Allah. In his case, it was because the categories of people and the lesson to come later on had to be made clear that when slander comes, people fall into certain categories. The first category, those who don't want to hear, they don't want to talk about it, they throw it straight out of the window. That's the first category of people. They're not bothered. It doesn't bother you, throw it out. Second category of people, those whom they heard it in a closed circle, like Abu Ayyub al-Ansari radiallahu anhu, his wife told him, did you hear what happened regarding Aisha? So he says, would you ever do that? She says, never. Well, if you wouldn't do it, she definitely didn't do it. So keep quiet, don't talk about it. It's, got, it's, it's actually a lie. So they threw it away after comparing themselves to it. That's the second category of people. And the third were those who spread it. Those who spread the tale. And the fourth category, the one who created the tale. So Allah says at the end of that, every category will achieve a portion of their punishment. May Allah forgive us. The Prophet ﷺ later on cleared it. He clarified it. He read the verses. He went to the people. He told them. He spoke to them. He said whatever he wanted to. In fact, he went to Abdullah ibn Ubay, who was such a dirty man. He was the head of the hypocrites. And the reason why we can say that is because Allah informed Muhammad ﷺ through revelation. And it was well known among the companions. And he died in that condition, Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul. He was known as Ra'sul Munafiqeen. The head of the hypocrites all the companions knew this is a troublemaker i'll give you one example he one day the prophet ﷺ went to him to clarify something so he was so arrogant he says move away move away the smell of your donkey has harmed me you know the prophet ﷺ was riding a donkey he says the smell of this donkey has harmed me so the companions do you think they would remain silent you know you've got powerful people down there they're not going to be quiet so one of the companions says, your smell is worse than the sweet scent of this donkey. <laughs> and then a battle ensued, which means some of the people who supported him wanted to attack this guy. And some of these people wanted to attack. But the moral of it is this man was so, you know, dirty in the way he spoke. The Prophet ﷺ calmed everyone down. He sorted the matter. He said, look, let's get back to the purpose that we are here for. And let's try and sort it out. Let's not be distracted by this. Sometimes we get distracted. So this whole, uh, this whole story that I'm mentioning goes to show that the Prophet ﷺ did clarify himself, himself, certain matters. And it is definitely a duty of our friends to clear our name on our behalf, in our absence. And that is a great act of worship. I'll give you an example. Someone says something bad about you. And a friend of yours happens to hear it. For them to just nod their heads, say something you know which hasn't clarified anything sometimes it makes it worse that's not a good friend they are supposed to by right say listen this is wrong it's false it's unacceptable it's not true don't say it don't utter it like sometimes we are taught as muslimin allah says it in the quran when you hear people engage in that which displeases allah get up and walk away i've had brothers and sisters tell me that it's so difficult to get up and walk away you know everyone's having a chat when you get together on a Saturday afternoon for tea, what are you talking about? All the other sisters who are not at the tea, right? In such a way that the day you're not at the tea, you can imagine what they're talking about, can't you? So the difficulty is for you, in order to stop that, you need to get up and tell the sisters, listen, it's an instruction of my maker. I love you guys, all of you. But the speech that's there right now, I can't take it because it's against what Allah says. You're hurting someone, you're talking bad about them, about them behind their back. I'm sorry, I've got to go. And you go. You do it once or twice. Your gatherings will be free of speaking about others. My mother in my own home, and I'm giving you this example. My father tells my mother, when you go and visit your friends, do not sit for longer than 15 minutes. So my mother says, and why? She says, because the 16th minute, he says, the 16th minute, you start talking about Maryam and Fatima and Safiya and everybody else. 
But for 15 minutes, how are you? Everything okay? What's happening? How's things going? How's the children? Oh, mashallah, your ch ch child's at school. Oh, alhamdulillah, how are you coping? How was the cooking? What did you make today? Do you have a little bit of it left? Let's taste it and so on. Mashallah, that's good. <laughs> Everything happens. The 16th minute, you've got nothing more to say. So what do you do? You say, you know, that sister there, be, watch out, be careful. You know, she's dangerous. She's poisonous. You know, she did this, this. That's backbiting. Forget about it. Cut it.